So I went to Tampa, you know what I mean? Started playing and things like that. Still pissed off about it. It's like, I'm with a whole new team. I'm forced to learn a whole new playbook uh, and things like that. So, and then, you know, got to meet in the midseason and I wasn't starting. First time in my life I ever got to play behind somebody. So that shit ran me high. Mad, mad as shit at each and every day coming into work. So then we played against Carolina, away in Carolina. And got on the plane. We won a game with I got on the plane. And I'm telling Coach B.A., I'm like, man, I need to, need to holler at you. Like, like, man, y'all told me all this shit about playing. I'm going to come in and start. And we in like week nine, and I'm still behind somebody. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So he was like, man, I'm, he's like, what you want to do? I'm like, man, fuck it, release me. In Tampa. In Tampa. And this is a conversation yeah. where you're like, release me. Yeah. And he was like, um, now, did you make that? Did you make that decision emotionally, or did you really have like think about it? Was, it? it was it was emotionally probably because if you <clears throat> go from Jacksonville, get cut, go to Tampa, that's my ass. And then a month later yeah. or two months later, they're like, Leonard Fournette asked for, to be released. Yeah, yeah. And then it's all of a sudden line, like, yeah. hey, who want, you don't want to touch this yeah. guy? Yeah. Um, it was it was a, it was from emotion emotion standpoint of view. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And uh, and the thing what I respect about Coach Ba, he's old school too. He was like, he was like, well, motherfucker, I don't want to cut you, but if you want to, I, I'm, 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 I'll do it. Mm-hmm. He's like, man, you're a great player, one of the best I've seen. This down the third. He's like, man, just make the decision and let me know when we make it home. And I would think about my kids, my family. You know, this how I provide for my kids. You know? Are certain guys reaching out to you? Do you do they? Are they aware of the situation? Nah, like your teammates? Nah. Nah. This had this happened on the plane. Oh damn! It's on the plane. I see Lenny in the exit row, mad as fuck. Yeah, this, right? No one talking to him right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, check this out. He's like, low. Let's get that. Dude, hey, for real, that's exactly how I probably went. Hey man, you see this? And it's just... All right. But it's on the plane, so I had to make the decision, and from there on, man, like, I, I flourish. Mm. What changed in your mind from that conversation saying, "Hey, release me," sitting there fuming on the plane, and then obviously it had to be what twenty four hours before we had another conversation. Yeah. What changed your mind saying, hey, don't release me? Like, do you think I'm just going to beat this dude out? Uh, who's, who's starting in front of you? Ronald Jones. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. My, my, I thought about my kids, man. Mm. You know, I thought about my, my, really my family. You know, because just the whole year they was there for me, talking to me, pushing me, you know, just trying to keep my head on the swivel, make sure I'm doing the right thing. So, I mean, you have to keep, keep fighting. You know, like, you never know what's at the end of the tunnel, to mm-hmm. be honest. No, I get that. That's, 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 uh, that's a wild timeline. Yeah, and now he's like become playoff whole, Lenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> you know yeah, the playoff Lenny stuff is hilarious, by the yeah, way. Yeah. yeah. Um, going back on the Jacksonville stuff, like I you hear a lot of stories. I don't know. Did you ever play with Marshall Spate? No. Uh, but Spate was a linebacker that was in Washington, and then he ended up going to Jacksonville. We ended up playing them in the game, and then afterwards, um, he's like, bro. Playing in Jacksonville is fucking wild. You got coaches fighting on the sideline, players fighting on the sideline. Just seemed like a real toxic organization. <laughs> oh, dude. Back in that, back in that, back yeah, when I, you I, were I, there. Yeah, I don't think we ever had fights on things like that with the coaches. Bro, even last year, uh, Miles Jack, we were playing them. It was, either, it was at home. And Miles Jack's like, it was like the end of the game. We're winning. He's like, just get us out of here. Like, why are we calling timeout? <laughs> like, we're trying to run it like four minutes and he's like can we just stop calling time out like let's just get the fuck out of here oh, like geez. great guy dude I, i'm a fan of miles Love freak, miles. freak a, athlete bro, bro the dude can move yeah but when you're you know it's on the friend it's on like rabel will never let that happen you know what i'm saying of uh, like my, like if that was a situation and he heard yeah. about it yeah i think there's I, a difference between hearing it, like, like knowing it. because rape is a dude that like he's gonna shoot to you straight mm-hmm. and he always says his, his big catchphrase is i'm gonna treat you how you treat the team and so if you're out there, you're working, he's going he's gonna to treat you right. Yeah. And guys that aren't, he's going to get on your ass. Yeah.